In Islam, animals are conscious of God. According to the Quran, they praise him, even if this praise is not expressed in human language. Baiting animals for entertainment or gambling is prohibited. The Quran explicitly allows the eating of the meat of certain halal lawful animals. Although some Sufis have practiced vegetarianism, there has been no serious discourse on the possibility of interpretations of scripture that require vegetarianism. Certain animals can be eaten under the condition that they are slaughtered in a specified way. Stunning cannot be used to kill an animal, according to the Halal Food Authority (HFA), a non-profit organization that monitors adherence to halal principles. But it can be used if the animal survives and is then killed by halal methods, the HFA adds. Reports the BBC. Prohibitions include swine, carrion, and animals involved in darbia ritual slaughter in the name of someone other than God. The Quran also states, "Eat of that over which the name of Allah hath been mentioned." Topic: <laughs> Pre-seventh century. In the Arabian Peninsula before the advent of Islam in the 7th century CE, Arab Bedouin, like other people, attributed the qualities and the faults of humans to animals. Virility, for example, was attributed to the cock, perfidy to the monkey, stupidity to the lizard, and baldness to the elephant, based on the facts that the names of certain tribes bear the names of animals, survivals of animal cults, prohibitions of certain foods and other indications. W. R. Smith argued for the practice of totemism by certain tribes of Arabia. Others have argued that this evidence may only imply practice of a form of animalism. In support of this, for example, it was believed that upon one's death, the soul departs from the body in the form of a bird, usually a sort of owl. The soul as bird then flies about the tomb for some time, occasionally crying out for vengeance. Topic: <laughs> Human duties in utilizing animals. According to Islam, human beings are allowed to use animals, but only if the rights of the animals are respected. The owner of an animal must do everything to benefit the animal. If the owner fails to perform their duties for the animal, nobody else has the right to use the animal. The duties humans have to animals in Islam are based in the Quran, Sunnah and traditions. Protection of animal lives Animal protection is more important than the fulfillment of religious obligations in special circumstances. That whoever kills a soul unless for a soul or for corruption done in the land, it is as if he had slain mankind entirely. And whoever saves one, it is as if he had saved mankind entirely. Topic. Protection of animals' physical health Harming, disabling, injuring, or cutting out the organs from any animal is strongly prohibited. Muslims may not cut the forelock, mane, or tail of a horse, because it is believed there is goodness in its forelock, its mane provides it warmth and it swats insects away with its tail. Topic. Protection of animals' sexual health Muslims are not allowed to perform acts such interbreeding of animals. Muhammad forbade people from castrating animals. Topic. Preventing cruelty and maltreatment to animals Muslims are not allowed to harass and misuse animals, which includes snatching a leaf from an ant's mouth. Muslims have no right to brand animals hamstring or crucify animals before killing, or burn animals even though they cause harm to humans. Humans should obtain animal meat by a swift slaughter and avoid cutting lengthwise. In Islamic slaughter, the spinal cord cannot be broken. 
Removing wool from animals is prohibited because it causes them vulnerability. Topic: <inaudible> Avoiding punishment of animals. Muslims cannot use any equipment that damages the animal, i.e., beating them in a circus show, forcing them to carry heavy loads, or running at extreme speeds in races, even to train them. Exposure to sound is also regulated. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Providing foodstuffs. Muslims are obliged to provide food and water for any animal they see, even if the animal does not belong to them. In providing food and water considerations are the quality of the provisions and the amount of the provision based on the animal's condition and location. Providing sanitation Animals' health must be respected, along with food, water, and shelter. Providing medication In the event of illness, Muslims are expected to pay for the care and medication. Topic. Providing dwelling From an Islamic view, the appropriate shelter for an animal has three characteristics Fits the animal's needs and they should not be placed in an unsanitary condition on the pretext that they do not understand Fits the physical needs of the animal and its health and protect it from cold and heat the dwelling of animals should not pollute the environment or spread disease to other organisms. Topic: Respecting animal of status. In Islam, the rights of animals are respected in both life and death. Animal bodies may never be used for malicious purposes. Quran Although over 200 verses in the Quran deal with animals and six surah divisions of the Quran are named after animals, animal life is not a predominant theme in the Quran. Hayawan, haywan Arabic, plural haywanat Arabic, the Arabic word meaning animal, appears only once in the Quran but in the sense of everlasting life personal. On the other hand, the term dabba Arabic, plural dawab, usually translated as beast or creature, to sometimes differentiate from flying birds while surprisingly including humans, occurs a number of times in the Quran, while remaining rare in medieval Arabic works on zoology. Animals in the Quran and early Muslim thought may usually, though not necessarily, be seen in terms of their relation to human beings, producing a tendency toward anthropocentrism. The Quran teaches that God created animals from water. God cares for all his creatures and provides for them. All creation praises God, even if this praise is not expressed in human language. God has prescribed laws for each species, laws of nature. Since animals follow the laws God has ordained for them, they are to be regarded as Muslim, just as a human who obeys the laws prescribed for humans Islamic law is a Muslim. Just like humans, animals form communities. In verse 638, the Quran applies the term ummah, generally used to mean a human religious community, for genera of animals. The Encyclopedia of the Quran states that this verse has been far-reaching in its moral and ecological implications. There is not an animal that lives on the earth, nor a being that flies on its wings, but forms part of communities like you. Nothing have we omitted from the book, and they all shall be gathered to their Lord in the end. The Quran says that animals benefit humans in many ways and that they are aesthetically pleasing to look at. This is used as proof of God's benevolence towards humans. Animals that are slaughtered in accordance with Sharia may be consumed. 
According to many verses of the Quran, the consumption of pork is sinful, unless there is no alternative other than starving to death in times, for example, of war or famine. Surat Yusuf of the Quran mentions that a reason why Yaqub was reluctant to let his son Yusuf to play in the open, even in the presence of his brothers, was that a dhib Arabic, lit. Wolf could eat him. The Quran contains three mentions of dogs. Verse 5 to 4 says, Lawful for you are all good things, and the prey that trained hunting dogs and falcons catch for you. Verse 1818 describes the companions of the cave, a group of saintly young men presented in the QUR and as exemplars of religion, sleeping with their dog stretching out its forelegs at the threshold. Further on, in verse 22, the dog is always counted as one of their numbers, no matter how they are numbered. In Muslim folklore, affectionate legends have grown around the loyal and protective qualities of this dog, whose name in legend is Kitmaya. Hunting dogs and the dog of the companions of Al Kaf are described in a positive light, and the companionship of these dogs is mentioned with approval. The Qur'an, thus, contains not even a hint of the condemnation of dogs found in certain hadith, which the majority of scholars regard to be pre Islamic Arab mythology and falsely attributed to the Prophet. Anyways, there is a whole chapter in the Quran naming the ants. In Sunni Islam killing of ants is prohibited. The Quran talks about a miraculous she-camel of God Arabic, she -camel that came from stone, in the context of the Prophet Saleh, Thamudi people and Al-Hijr. Pork is haram, forbidden, to eat, because its essence is considered impure. This is based on the verse of the Quran where it is described as being rise, Arabic, impure, Quran 6-145. Verses 50 and 51 of Surat al-Mudathir in the Quran talk about humor, asses or donkeys, fleeing from a kaswara, lion, beast of prey, or hunter, in its criticism of people who were averse to Muhammad's teachings, such as donating wealth to the less wealthy. Topic. Sunnah Sunnah refers to the traditional biographies of Muhammad wherein examples of sayings attributed to him and his conduct have been recorded. Sunni and Shiite hadith anecdotes about Muhammad differ vastly, with Shia hadith generally containing more anthropomorphism and praise of animals. Animals must not be mutilated while they are alive. Muhammad is also reported by Ibn Omar and Abdullah bin al as to have said, there is no man who kills even a sparrow or anything smaller, without its deserving it, but God will question him about it on the judgment day. And, whoever is kind to the creatures of God is kind to himself. Muhammad issued advice to kill animals that were fawasik Arabic, harmful ones, such as the rat and the scorpion, within the harem holy area of Mecca. Killing other non domesticated animals in this area, such as aquids and birds, is forbidden. There is an account in the Quran Surah and Namal of Sulaiman Solomon talking to ants and birds. Muslims are required to sharpen the blade when slaughtering animals to ensure that no pain is felt. Muhammad is said, For charity showed to each creature which has a wet liver, i.e., is alive, there is a reward. There is a hadith in Muwatta Imam Malik about Muslim pilgrims having to beware of the wolf besides other animals. Muhammad is also reported as having reprimanded some men who were sitting idly on their camels in a marketplace, saying, "Either ride them or leave them alone." Apart from that, the camel has significance in Islam. al kaswa Arabic was a female Arabian camel that belonged to Muhammad and was dear to him. Muhammad rode on Kaswa during the Hegira migration from Mecca to Medina, his Hajj in 629 CE, and the conquest of Mecca in 630. The camel was also present during the Battle of Badr in 624. After the passing away of the Prophet, the camel is reported to have starved itself to death, refusing to take food from anyone. In the Nahj al Balaha, the Shia book of the sayings of Ali, an entire sermon is dedicated to praising peacocks. Bees are highly revered in Islam. The structural genius of a bee is thought as due to divine inspiration. 
Their product honey is also revered as medicine. Killing a bee is considered a great sin. In Shi'ite hadith, bats are praised as a miracle of nature, the wolf may symbolize ferocity. As for the kalb Arabic, dog, there are different views regarding it. The Sunni Maliki school of Islamic jurisprudence distinguishes between wild dogs and pet dogs, only considering the saliva of the former to be impure. On the other hand, some schools of Islamic law consider dogs as unclean. Najis". The historian William Montgomery Watt states that Muhammad's kindness to animals was remarkable, citing an instance of Muhammad while traveling with his army to Mecca in 630 AD, posting sentries to ensure that a female dog and her newborn puppies were not disturbed. Muhammad himself prayed in the presence of dogs and many of his cousins and companions, who were the first Muslims, owned dogs. The Mosque of the Prophet in Medina allowed dogs to frolic about in Muhammad's time and for several centuries afterwards. In two separate narrations by Abu Huraira, the Prophet told his companions of the virtue of saving the life of a dog by giving it water and quenching its thirst. One story referred to a man who was blessed by Allah for giving water to a thirsty dog, the other was a prostitute who filled her shoe with water and gave it to a dog, who had its tongue rolling out from thirst. For this deed she was granted the ultimate reward, the eternal paradise under which rivers flow, to live therein forever. The Quran Surah 18, verse 9 praises the dog for guarding the seven sleepers fleeing religious persecution. Islamic scholar Ingrid Matson thus notes that this tender description of the dog guarding the cave makes it clear that the animal is good company for believers. Hazrat Umar, the second caliph of Islam, said that if a dog was hungry in his kingdom, he would be derelict of his duty. According to the Quran the use of hunting dogs is permitted, which is a reason the Maliki school draws a distinction between feral and domesticated dogs since Muslims can eat game that has been caught in a domesticated dog's mouth, the saliva of a domesticated dog cannot be impure. Abu Lfadl found it hard to believe that the same God who created such companionable creatures would have his prophet declare them unclean stating that animosity towards dogs in folk Islam reflected views far more consistent with pre-Islamic Arab customs and attitudes. Quote dot. Furthermore, he found that a hadith from one of the most trustworthy sources tells how the Prophet himself had prayed in the presence of his playfully cavorting dogs. According to a story by Muslim Ibn al-Hajjaj, black dogs are a manifestation of evil in animal form and the company of dogs voids a portion of a Muslim's good deeds. However, according to Khalid Abu Lfadl, the majority of scholars regard this to be pre-Islamic Arab mythology and a tradition to be falsely attributed to the Prophet. Matson teaches that for followers of other schools, there are many other impurities present in our homes, mostly in the form of human waste, blood, and other bodily fluids. And that since it is common for these impurities to come in contact with a Muslim's clothes, they are simply washed or changed before prayer. However, this is not necessary for adherents of the Sunni Maliki scholars. Jurists from the Sunni Maliki school disagree with the idea that dogs are unclean. Individual fatawa rulings have indicated that dogs be treated kindly or otherwise released, and earlier Islamic literature often portrayed dogs as symbols of highly esteemed virtues such as self-sacrifice and loyalty, which, in the hands of despotic and unjust rulers, become oppressive instruments. Domestic cats have a special place in Islamic culture. Muhammad is said to have loved his cat Mu'ezza to the extent that he would go without his cloak rather than disturb Mu'ezza that was sleeping on it. Big cats like the Asad, lion, Namir, leopard, and Namur, tiger, can symbolize ferocity, similar to the wolf. Apart from ferocity, the lion has an important position in Islam and Arab culture. Men noted for their bravery, like Ali, Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib, and Omar Mukhtar, were given titles like Asad Allah, Lion of God, and Asad as Sa, Lion of the Desert. 
A spider is supposed to have saved Muhammad and Abu Bakr by spinning a web over the entrance of the cave in which they hid. Because of the web, the persecutor of them thought the cave must be empty, otherwise, there would not have been a web. Therefore, Muslims consider killing spiders as a sin. Topic: Muslim cultures. Usually, in Muslim majority cultures, animals have names. One animal may be given several names, which are often interchangeable with names of people. Muslim names or titles like Assad and Gadanva (Arabic for lion), Sher and Arslan (Persian and Turkish for lion), respectively, are common in the Muslim world. Prominent Muslims with animal names include Hamza, Abd al Rahman ibn Saq al Azdi, called Abu Huraira, the father of the kitten, Abdul Qadir Gilani, called Al Baz al Ashhab, the wise falcon, and Lal Shabazz Calendar of Saywan, called Red Falcon. Islamic literature has many stories of animals. Arabic and Persian literature boast many animal fables. The most famous, Kalila wa Dimna or Panchatantra, translated into Arabic by Abd Allah ibn al makafa in the 8th century, was also known in Europe. In the 12th century, Shahab al-Din al-Sarawadi wrote many short stories of animals. At about the same time, in northeastern Iran, Atanashapuri, Farid al-Din Atta, composed the epic poem Mantik al-Taya, meaning the conference of the birds. In Malaysia in 2016, the Malaysian Islamic Development Department, a religious governing body, prohibited the use of the term hot dog to refer to the food of that name. It asked food outlets selling them to rename their products or risk refusal of halal certification. Per local media, Malaysian halal food guidelines prohibit naming halal products after non-halal products. Islamist organization Hamas which controls the Gaza Strip, banned public dog walking in May 2017, stating it was to "...protect our women and children." Hamas officials stated that the ban was in response to rise in dog walking on the streets which they stated was "...against culture and traditions in Gaza." Topic. Controversy Topic. Ritual slaughter UK animal welfare organisations have decried some ritual methods of slaughter practised in Islam and Judaism as inhumane and causing "...severe suffering." According to Judy MacArthur Clark, chairperson of the Farm Animal Welfare Council, cattle require up to two minutes to bleed to death when halal or kosher means of slaughter are used on cattle. This is a major incision into the animal and to say that it doesn't suffer is quite ridiculous. In response, Majid Katmi of the Muslim Council of Britain stated that, It is a sudden and quick hemorrhage. A quick loss of blood pressure and the brain is instantaneously starved of blood and there is no time to start feeling any pain." In permitting Darbia, the German Constitutional Court cited the 1978 study led by Professor Wilhelm Schulzer at the University of Veterinary Medicine Hanover which concluded that t he slaughter in the form of ritual cut is, if carried out properly, painless in sheep and calves according to the EEG recordings and the missing defensive actions." Muslims and Jews have also argued that traditional British methods of slaughter have meant that animals are sometimes rendered physically immobile, although with full consciousness and sensation. Applying a sharp knife in Shechita and Dav, by contrast, ensures that no pain is felt, the wound inflicted is clean, and the loss of blood causes the animal to lose consciousness within seconds. See also Animal rights Animal sacrifice Animals in Christian art Legal aspects of ritual slaughter Relate animals in the Quran Qurbani Suleiman and animals Surat and Namal Yunus and the Nun <laughs>